everybody, and welcome to the opening day of the 2023 MLB season, where your Chicago White Sox are going to be taking on last year's World Series champions, the Houston Astros. A very intimidating first opponent for the season, for sure, but they are without last year's ace and Cy Young winner, Justin Verlander, who, of course, beat out our own pitcher Dylan Cease to first place in that category. Of course, Dylan Cease will be on the mound for us today, and uh, on the mound for Houston is going to be Framber Valdez, a very capable pitcher who is going to show his stuff as the ace of the staff this season for Houston as they look to repeat an incredible season like the one they had last year. Getting a look here at some of the projected stats for our Chicago White Sox. Tim Anderson's probably going to lead the team in batting average at a little above 300 as he can usually hit that mark. Eloy Jimenez expected to be our main hitter with the OPS and home runs. And, of course, Andrew Vaughn, we're hoping, will be a big leader in RBIs. He led the team in a lot of stats last season, of course, mostly due to our injury troubles, but we really want him to take a step up this year. And there he is, Framber Valdez, making his way to the mound to start off the season. The Astros are an incredible team, and they retained a lot, most of their talent from last year, and are going to be a force to be reckoned with this year for sure. But we'll see today if our Chicago White Sox can handle that test. Framber last year is one of the pitchers in the staff of Houston. 31 starts, a very good record, lots of wins, 17-6, and, and a 2.82 ERA. Very low whip as well, showing he has nasty stuff, man, with 194 strikeouts and only 67 walks in what was a very impressive season for the now ace of the Houston Astros staff. Up first at the plate, of course, for the season is Tim Anderson. He will be our leadoff batter in both lineups against lefties and righties this year. He's a very good and consistent hitter and a very good, especially against lefties, as he starts off with a foul ball off of Framber's sinker. But on a 1-2 count, Framber Valdez leaves a curveball hanging in the middle of the zone, and Tim Anderson's able to hit it up the middle. Well hit single to start off the season for us, and hopefully that is a sign of things to come, as coming up to the plate next would be Ben Benintendi, but he would get out, and we will skip over to Luis Robert, who would also strike out, as Framber Valdez really shows off his stuff. But now we're going to skip to Eloy Jimenez here. He's, of course, our designated hitter against both righties and lefties. Leaves a lot to be desired in fielding stats, but he is a very solid hitter, and we hope that he can stay healthy and hit consistently for us this season. He would get a good ball to hit there, but it would be caught by the right fielder. Very unfortunate, but we hope to see a little bit better coming from him. Not a bad start to the day at all, getting a hit against Framber Valdez, who's going to be a very solid ace, of course, for the Houston Astros. But our ace, Dylan Cease, is up to the plate off of a 2.2 ERA last year. What a year he had. Coming second place in Cy Young voting to the Houston Astros, Justin Verlander, and he would start off looking like a man with a plan. Ooh, man, that is some really nice pitching, and he finishes off Jose Altuve, a one-time MVP winner back in 2017 and a very good and consistent player for the Astros. What a pitch there. Hits the top of the zone and gets him looking. Michael Brantley would be up next, and he would actually hit this one well down the middle to Luis Robert uh, for a nice single. Not a great way to start off, but that's all right. We just need Dylan Cease to recover here as uh, they would get it back into the infield. And here he is up against Jordan Alvarez. And that is not a great start, is it? As he finds his way to go yard well into the uh, bullpen there as uh, Jordan Alvarez has already taken his yard for this one. First home run of the season, obviously. A third at-bat of the season for us. And Dylan Cease has already given up a big homer to one of the best players in the league. Jordan Alvarez is an incredible hitter and an incredible player. But... I don't think we were expecting that so soon. 418 feet. What an absolute rocket off of the bat right there. And after that, Dylan Cease looks a little bit shaken up as he pitches a walk to Kyle Tucker. And then he would at least recover with a nice strikeout to our former player, Jose Abreu, of course, one of the best players we had last year and one of the few who did not ever hit the IL for us. And we will not get through this inning clean, however, as the next... Whereas the guy on first gets to advance all the way to third on that single. And uh, Dylan Cease is struggling here in the first inning. Can he get out of it? Luis Robert will have to make a play here, and he does. 
Jordan Alvarez, of course, getting the Astros started off hot here with a very nice home run, 418 feet, well into the bullpen. And uh, our guys are going to have to try to match that as Yoan Moncada hits it really well here, but it is going to be caught at the warning track. I thought for sure that one would be out of here, but now Andrew Vaughn up to the plate. We love this kid. A couple years left of team control, and he gets a hold of that one. Thrown right down the middle by Framber Valdez, but it goes nowhere. Pops it up into the short outfield as we would have Yasmati Grandal next up, and he would hit it right to second base, but they played the shift, something you can totally still do in 2023. And we'll skip here to the second inning. We're at the bottom of the second. Dylan Cease leads off with yet another walk, showing a serious lack of control today, and then he would allow this double as Oscar Colas cannot catch up to it. We would try to get it to the home plate, but not nowhere near enough time as uh, Dylan Cease is really letting them have their way with him. And uh, it's not going to stop there. He's going to pitch another walk here to Jose Altuve and already going through the order once at 3-0 down. Guys on first and second, and he's going to load the bases here with Michael Brantley. Dylan Cease really needs to get this under the control, but he would not as he would then walk Jordan Alvarez. That means he has walked a run in already. It is 4-0 in the bottom of the second, folks, and we've got to start thinking that they're probably going to pull him soon as Andrew Vaughn makes a huge playoff of that ground ball, actually, tagging the base and getting a throw to second in time for a 3-6 double play. That is a rarity. But I did talk about in the first episode that Andrew Vaughn has a very impressive arm for a first baseman, and he is showing it off there. Look at the spin and the throw. Very well played there, and a great job by Tim Anderson as well to apply the tag. See, he really needs to do something here as he gets Jose swinging again. Two teammates who know each other really well, I'm sure. Two of the best players on this team last year. And Abreu, playing for last year's champions, has started off his season with two strikeouts. We skip all the way to the third inning as we would do nothing in the bottom of the second. Sorry, at the top of the third. And uh, Dylan Cease looks like he's recovering a little bit. Or like he got one strikeout to start the inning and then lets them go yard again. This time, Jeremy Pena, last year's World Series MVP. He went 400 in that World Series. And uh, what an incredible player he is. He shows off his uh, pat with a 409-foot home run right there. Opening day is not going the way that Dylan Cease wanted, and that would be the final straw as Jimmy Lambert, one of our long relievers, is sent out. Had a very good, solid season last year in 42 games, putting up a 3-2-6 ERA, and he would start the day off pretty well, getting it to ground out to Elvis Andrews there and getting us out of the third inning. Only down 6-2-0. We've really got to get something going here, and it's just not happening as Eloy Jimenez gets out there. A great jump throw. Nothing going there at the top of the fourth. I mean, look at this play defensively, man. That is just incredible. Making it look easy. Eloy Jimenez was not even close to the base. Definitely an out. And Jordan Alvarez, I mean, what are you going to do? He just continues to eat us up. Jimmy Lambert taking yard now as Jordan Alvarez already has two on the year. This one only 369 feet. Nice. And uh, his second of the year already is two more runs go home. Here we go at the plate on a 3-2 count. You've got Jose Abreu, and it is going to be another single as our outfielder just can't quite get there, Benintendi. And here we go. Bregman takes the hit, but it grounds out as Lambert's able to recover it and get it to first, and we do get out of the fourth without allowing any more damage as Jordan Alvarez continues to just eat us alive. Up next now is Yoan Moncada, and he hits this one pretty well, and it is going to get down. So we get a single, finally a base runner for the first time since the first inning. And, and there's another one. Framber Valdez leaving some seriously hittable pitches out in the middle here as Andrew Vaughn's going to get himself a double here, allowing Yoan Moncada to jump all the way to third. You can see him getting a little excited there. Uh, hopefully we can do something with this. It is now 8-0, to zero, and that's a really weak ground out by Elvis Andrews. But he's actually going to be safe as an error drags the first baseman off of the bag. And we are going to get something going here. It's 8-1 to one now. And okay, Oscar Colos almost grounded into a double play, but he is able to make it to first. And we do actually get a great hit here from Tim Anderson. 
Not quite a home run, but what a hit that was as we are looking to send the guy on third all the way home. Kolos is going to score, but Anderson also ran past second, and he gets tagged out easily. I think they should not have sent him. Maybe they weren't trying to. Maybe they were just trying to send the guy on third, and he mistook that as him supposed to run to. He was not, but we'll skip now here to the bottom of the fifth as Jimmy Lambert's really getting some good stuff going, getting some strikeouts. There's two good strikeouts there, getting out of the inning nice and clean. And maybe we do have a little bit of a rally going here as it is 8-3 to three to end the fifth inning. Going into the sixth inning with the meat of the order coming up with Ben Benintendi at the plate. And Framber Valdez is still out there and he gets a pretty decent hit here, but the second baseman's going to be able to catch it. Luis Robert at the plate on a 3-2 count and he might get to base on that. It's going to be close and another error here as the first baseman, Alex Bregman, is just not able to bring that in. Or maybe it was a bad throw, actually. They're saying it was a bad throw on the shortstop, Jeremy Pena. And we'll get another hit out of Eloy Jimenez here. So that means we've got Eloy Jimenez on first and Luis Robert on second, which means Yoan Moncada can possibly drive one of those in. Luis Robert looking to get home here, and he is going to be safe. Yoan Moncada with yet another hit. A uh, guy I'm very excited to hit with this season. We saw some serious potential of what he could do in spring training and he looks really good as Andrew Vaughn gets himself another hit go on son gets that one out into the far left field and we are able to advance one runner all the way home making it eight to five with two players in scoring position this is actually a really impressive rally here in the late innings coming out at 111 miles per hour exit velocity what a hit and that would be the final straw for Houston as Framber Valdez is going to get pulled. He started off really dom dominant, only allowing one hit in the first four innings, but we've uh, actually recovered and made a decent little rally here in the fifth and sixth innings. Hector Neris is going to come out here as the reliever. Had a decent year last year and uh, not going to start off too well for him as Yasmani Grandal is able to get two guys to score. No, they're saying that Vaughn is out at home. He shouldn't have gone. We do get one run out of that, but Vaughn is out for the second out of the inning as it is eight to six. What a throw by the right fielder. And Elvis Andrews would get caught looking. What a throw by Hector Neres there as we would send Aaron Bummer out to start the next inning. The lefty gets it started with a walk. Wow, definitely not something we've seen way too much of today, but he would recover a little bit, getting Jordan Alvarez to go down looking. A very nice strikeout for Aaron Bummer, and it looks like he may get out of this without any damage. Oh, man, what a hit, and it looks like it may just be out of here as Luis Robert jumps, but why did he jump twice? As It's actually not out of there yet, and he picks up the ball finally, but... What are we doing? That allows an easy run to score whatever that... I think he thought it was going over the fence and he was just trying to jump to stop it and didn't realize it actually came down right behind him there as you could see it hitting the ground. But there would not be any further damage after that as Aaron Bummer gets another strike out there and Blake Taylor would come out to start off the next inning for the Astros. The lefty is in there and we've hit really well against lefties today. Oscar Colas is of course over two as of now, but... He would start off the inning pretty well there, getting a nice single to the outfield. And uh, we've already got a base runner as it is 6-9. to nine. Nice. Here at the top of the seventh, and maybe we can make something happen here. That is his first major league hit. Oscar Colas' first major league hit of his entire career. Starting the season off on the major league team this year, we saw a lot of potential out of him in spring training, and I wanted to keep him up here. See how he plays in the major leagues. He's got decent fielding stats and a solid bat, as you can see. And that's a great first hit for him getting it to just go oppo tacos to the outfield here and a solid pitch to hit and he did make sure you keep that ball Luis Bear is up next and he gets a lot into this one just maybe could get out but probably not as it's a pretty easy catch for the center fielder in the end and that would be the end of the seventh inning Kendall Graveman coming in next for us he came off a very solid season last year with a 3-1-8 ERA and he would start off pretty well getting through the inning pretty cleanly only allowed one base runner and would get through the seventh inning not allowing any more runs score is still nine two six we jump to the eighth inning now as brian abreu comes out to pitch for the houston astros and we really need to get something going here if we want to finish off this rally but we would not get anything 
he would strike out the side as Andrew Vaughn reaches on a really far out pitch that he should not have swung at. In the next inning, Kendall Graven would get us started off at the bottom of the eighth. And he gets two strikeouts to start it off, so he's actually looking really good today. And hopefully he can keep that up and not allow them any more runs as we try to make a comeback here late in the game. They do get a base run here off Jordan Alvarez, who has just eaten our lineup alive today. He is just taking no prisoners, man. Jordan Alvarez, what a player. But the next player would go down looking. That's Kyle Tucker. Had no chance. Kendall Graveman coming out of a great inning there. Three strikeouts for him, only allowing one hit. And Ryan Presley is up. A very good closer. And the Houston Astros love him to death. And on a 3-2 count here, Gavin Sheets coming into pinch hit would fly out into the outfield before Ellis Andrews strikes out. And then on a 1-1 count, Oscar Colas would swing at a pitch that's just outside the box, clipping the edge there on the circle change. And then he would get a decent enough pitch to hit on the low fastball, but it would just fly out to the left fielder. And the Astros would come out with a 9-6 win. You got to say our boys showed a lot of fight here. We did start a rally after being down a, a lot of runs at the early part of the game. It was looking rough, but they never gave up, and they really gave it their all, and we almost made a comeback there, only losing 9-6. Offense showed good strides, but Dylan Cease, that was not the kind of day you want to see out of somebody who's coming off a year where he was second in Cy Young voting. Uh, largely dominated by the Astros and Framber Valdez until Valdez was eventually rocked a little bit for five runs late uh, towards the sixth inning, but it was rough, man. Dylan Cease obviously taking the loss. Framber Valdez gets the win, and Ryan Presley gets his first save of the season with that ninth inning close. Jordan Alvarez is your player of the game, going three for four with two homers and a double. He also had a walk in there. He just had a crazy day. But on our team, Andrew Vaughn looked really solid, two for four. Tim Anderson, also two for four. Uh, both of them had a double. Andrew Vaughn actually had two doubles in their RBI. Yohan Moncada, also two for four. And Oscar Colas with his first MLB run and first MLB hit. If we could take a quick dive into our scouting, these are the scouts I showed you guys last time that we had. We see we've got $26,000 in the budget, which is a lot of room to play with. And I, I see a lot of need to change here is we've got guys that just can only scout one position and can't scout pitchers. I mean, none of these guys can scout pitchers, and I want to change that to where all of them can kind of scout both positions. So I'm going to see what I can find. And as you can see here, I was able to find three really good guys using most of our budget. Still got $10,000 left over, but we've got Jason Sedana, Fletcher, Carvajal, and Bruce Saito. All of them look very good. Um, low discovery on Fletcher and Bruce, but that's not a super important stat if I'm not trying to discover new players in the draft, which is something I might occasionally do. And if I do, I'll just put Jason Sedano on that. I wanted people who are efficient and good at scouting both pitchers and position players quickly for when we start getting into those areas where I want to scout individually and when I'm scouting a larger position group. Um, but I, I think that's the best way to go about it. And those guys, I think this is going to be a really good scouting staff for us. As far as the three positions that I really want to improve the most, I want to improve at starting pitcher, catcher, and shortstop first. Um, obviously, catcher, we've got two pretty short-term options. It's not looking great there with Sebi Zavala and Yasmani Grandal there. Neither of those are long-term pieces, I don't believe. And starting pitcher, we just need to improve. We have a lot of one-year expiring contracts coming up, and I don't think a lot of those guys are going to return. So we really need to find that next generation of pitchers that's going to come in and just help us improve this team. Uh, at shortstop, uh, I know we have Tim Anderson. I do like Tim Anderson, especially for his offensive upside, but I, I would really like to move him to either third base or even second base probably next year uh, and get somebody who's a little bit more defensively sound at the shortstop position. Um, looking at a couple prospects we had there, we've got Dominic Cordero out of Massachusetts. This kid looks like he's got some okay upside at offense and defensively he looks really solid as a shortstop coming out of that eastern region along with Lester Rodriguez who's out of Connecticut and a couple other guys there were on the eastern side. Uh, Lester also looks like he's got a little bit better offensive upside actually and slightly better defensive upside. I think he's just a better prospect overall but a much better gap as well because he's a, a high school player so it's just not as sure on what he's actually eventually going to be able to do uh, moving to some catcher options we've got tommy park out of south korea there was a lot of international guys available but a, a couple of the main ones here at catcher this kid looks like he could be a stud he's got a really high draft rank for both us and the mlb as we look to scout him we'll see where he lands but i i honestly would be surprised if he fell all the way to us um, but he looks really good man crazy offensive potential 
Uh, the power could even get pretty decent, but his contact, vision, discipline, all of that's crazy good. Um, and his defensive stats are just okay. You'd like to see a little bit better, but his arm does look really good, which is, of course, very important for a catcher. So that's what matters. And it looks like his speed won't be half bad either. Uh, then you go to Carlos Cervantes here out of Mexico. He's not quite as you know, sure of himself. Uh, definitely could be a bust, but we're going to scout him and see where we're at. 100 on both boards so far, but we'll, we'll see where he lands. Only 18 years old out of high school. Looks like he could have some solid hitting potential for contact, not much power. And the defensive stats definitely look like they might be a little bit better in the long run, but uh, we'll have to see after we get a little bit more scouting done on him. Uh, moving to some starting pitchers that I like. There was a lot of international starting pitchers. Li Ma out of Chinese Taipei. Uh, Taipei, I, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> but uh, here we are. Um, he looks pretty solid. Uh, again, 18 years old in high school. He's not for sure. We'll have to get some good scouting on him, see how low of a range we can get those two, because again, high schoolers have a wider range that they could be uh, potential wise and overall wise. So it looks like he could have some really good stuff. His hits and walks per nine look really nice. He's probably my favorite of the bunch we've looked at so far. Then you have Alberto, Alberto Carrara uh, out of the Dominican Republic. He's a really good looking player, 20 years old. Um, looks like he's got some pretty consistent stuff across the board. Good hits per nine strikeouts per nine the walks and home runs per nine are as high as i would like but uh he looks like he'll be a solid player overall hitting that 17th rank um and then steven espinoza out of mexico another 18 year old i really like the look of this kid i think he's got a lot of upside but um he may not again it's hard to see with these high schoolers i just want all these guys to get scouted uh, and there was even a couple more but i'm not going to go too in depth on anybody else for now Lots of other episodes to do that. Let me show you what I put our scouts on. We've, of course, got a the first scout uh, looking at starting pitchers internationally. That would be Fletcher. Uh, he's going to get a good amount of scouting, and I'm going to probably just leave most of these for the first month, those first three or four weeks, uh, get a lot of players scouted in those positions, and then start doing more individual players to grow our draft pool. But I'm going to start out here with uh, starting pitchers international, uh, catchers international several prospects there and then shortstops in the east as the most uh, that I saw in you know region wise with decent potential so uh, those are what we're looking at for scouting so far and that's where we're gonna start again I'm just gonna start with these more generic groups for the first few weeks get a good baseline on these positions that I really want and then we'll start doing more individuals and looking more in-depth at specific people uh, moving forward a little bit here, uh, you can see I've simmed out the first few games, and it, it's not going super well. We would end up losing that second game and the fourth game in the series to Houston. Um, we would get one win, 8-2, to two, and that's a solid look, but not a great start to the season at 1-3 and three for our Chicago White Sox as we get ready to go into the second game that we're going to play today against the San Francisco Giants, our home opener for the season, and they are 2-1. and one. And welcome to the second game of the season here as your Chicago White Sox take on the San Francisco Giants in our home opener for the season. It's obviously not been the most incredible start to the season with a pretty shoddy record going back and forth with losses and wins through the first few games. And uh, it's not looking super great so far, but obviously it is way too early in the season to tell what's going to happen. Uh, very excited to say that on the bump today, we will have Michael Kopesh. So hopefully we have a pretty good game coming up here. San Francisco is obviously not the best team in the world, but neither are we. So maybe it'll be a good one. Here's again those 2023 preseason projections. We've got Anderson, Jimenez, Vaughn, Billy Hamilton's our top projected guy for uh, stolen bases, which I think is going to be difficult coming off the bench, but I don't make the projections. Uh, here is Michael Kopesh, as we were talking about, 26 years old and just a lot of potential in this kid. He's had a few good years behind him, coming off a year where he's had 25 starts, a 5-9 and nine record, and a 3-5-4 ERA, which is not bad by any means. So hopefully he can recreate that form and or do better. Starting off the night here with a very good ground out to Andrew Vaughn, who fields it well and gets to the first base. As we look at the Giants lineup here, Tyro Estrada le leading off right there, J.D. Davis behind him, and Brandon Crawford always very solid in the three spot. As here we go, Michael Kopesh getting hot. A nice pitch leads to another ground out coming straight to him, and he gets it to the first baseman, Vaughn. But he would end up walking Brandon Crawford. Crawford showing a very, very good amount of discipline there. A 538 average to start the season for Brandon Crawford. He's a very good hitter. And Ben Intendi would be able to field this one cleanly, though, off Hanniger, who hits it just out into the outfield. Nothing to worry about there as he flies out and we get out of the inning pretty safely by Michael Kopesh. 
Sean Manaya is the starter for the Giants, and he did not have a great season last year. Almost at a 5 ERA. And the Chicago White Sox lineup here is going to look to do a little bit better than they did the other day. Though they did have a pretty good game towards the second half. They still weren't able to make the comeback as we lost the opener. And that first inning did not go very well for us. As you see, we were just swinging at things we shouldn't have been with that really bad swing by Luis Robert Jr. Jock Peterson got in his bag and almost got it out of the park. But Colos is just able to get there right at the fence and makes the catch. Kopash would allow a good hit here on two outs to Michael Conforto returning this year after being out all of last year with surgery. And he would strike out Perez on the next pitch. He gets through the first two innings cleanly here as we are still at 0-0. One hit for the Giants, but nothing to worry about so far. A good strikeout there on Roberto Perez. And Michael Kopash is looking every bit the high potential prospect that he is. Jimenez up to the plate and... A little bit below the zone, actually, but he's able to hit the sinker up the middle for a base on the 1-2 count. And he is on first, allowing a chance for Yohan Moncada to do something with it, but he is going to ground into a double play. Sorry, Andrew Vaughn is going to ground into a double play. Moncada was out on the play before that. We go into the third here, and Michael Kopesh staying hot with a strikeout there. And another strikeout to get Mitch Hanniger. He is feeling himself today. And you see this fan came prepared with the right sign today. Lots of strikeouts so far. As Elvis Andrews comes up against Sean Manaya with one out already in the inning. And he would hit a nice single trying to get the offense started here in the bottom of the third. That is Elvis Andrews' 2,000th career hit. What a crazy number for him, the 34-year-old in the last year of his contract. He'll uh, be here this year to be our second baseman, but it's probably going to be his last for us. Oscar Colas up next. We saw him get his first league hit in the last game. And now here he is getting a very nice double. And they might send Andrews home. Andrews is going to go home. And can he make it? He does. And it is 1-0 here in the bottom of the third as Oscar Colas gets a great RBI off that double. What a great hit. Just lined it straight out into the gap. Great job by Andrews, who's not very fast, but he runs all the way from first to home. Great job. They tried to get him on the relay, but it just wasn't quick enough. And a great run as the White Sox take the lead 1-0 here, trying to get some heat going. Luis Robert Jr. will be up against Manaya here, and he gets a pretty good hit, but the second baseman does a great job to stop it, not getting anywhere further than just a single. And Jimenez here in the bottom of the fourth gets to first as it looked like J.D. Davis just wasn't able to field that cleanly. Looked like that kind of rode right off of his glove, and he just couldn't quite pick it up. Now, Yoan Moncada is up next, and he is also going to ground into a double play. And that's just unfortunate, man. It looked like we were going to get something going, and we are not going to get anything here in the fourth inning as Andrew Vaughn pops out in the right into the infield there. But Andrew Vaughn would make up for it here defensively as Conforto grounds it to him. He didn't field it cleanly at first, but he was still able to get it in time. And there's Michael Kopesh getting really, really lucky on a call that was clearly outside, and Perez was not very happy about it. He would end up striking out the side, though, and getting out of the fourth inning as we go to the bottom of the fifth with Sean Manaya. And that is a great hit once again by Oscar Colas. He's going to grab himself a great double here. And with two outs already, he was able to get that one just past J.D. Davis, who's not been a very good fielder today, but that's a really hard one to get to, to be fair. He just didn't have the hops for it. And that's another double for Oscar Colas. And Tim Anderson gets a decent enough pitch to hit with the low circle change, and he is not quite going to be able to make it. That will end the inning. A good play by Brandon Crawford. Very solid fielder and a solid hitter. Just a good player overall. And Brandon Crawford, speaking of, is going to walk again as Kopesh kind of struggles here with his control. And we'll see a couple guys warming up in the bullpen for the White Sox. And maybe we'll see them coming in sooner rather than later as Mitch Hanniger hits one down the line. And Ben Intendi just can't get it in in time. That's going to be a run. And that would be the end of Kopesh's day. Did pretty well overall, but Aaron Bummer is going to come in here. He's not started the game off, not started the year off very well. Two games under his belt and a 9 ERA, but again, it is too early to say anything as he's dotting the corner here on Jock Peterson. Two guys on base, guy on first, and a guy in scoring position on second. He's got to be clutch, and it looks like he's going to get out of it as Andrews does a great job fielding that and tossing it up to Anderson, who gets it to Vaughn just in time. A great double play, and we'll see 
the bottom of the six start off with a great hit by Eloy Jimenez here a double on a 3-2 count with two outs perhaps we can get our offense going it is tied one to one right now and we'd really like a win here as Yohan Moncada gets another great pitch to hit right down the middle and he takes advantage of it with a great hit it's just going to be a single for him but it's enough for Eloy Jimenez to go all the way from second to home let's take the Google StatCast look at that what a good hit line drives it out into left he possibly could have legged that into a double if he had a little bit more speed but he just doesn't quite have it but it's all right Came out at 110 miles per hour, a great line out in the left field, and that's enough for the San Francisco coach to say it's done for Mania for the day. And Ross Stripling would come out here, had a really good season last year in 32 games, a 10 and 4 record, a 3.01 ERA, and a really low WHIP at 102 as well. It's surprising to see that he's in a bullpen row to <laughs> roll to start the year, but he did a really good job getting him out of the sixth inning. Is Andrew Vaughn grounds out to third. And Yon Mankata here, let's just take another look at that hit for the RBI to put us up 2-1. to one. We have seven hits on the day, so you'd like to see us capitalizing a little bit more, but at least we have a lead. Now, Kendall Graveman is in, came in to be the reliever for this inning, and that would be a great double play to get us out of the inning, so a pretty quick inning there. He allowed one base runner, but then, of course, got the double play. And now we've got Yasmani Grandal, Mr. Zero Speed himself. Looks like he's going to try to make a double out of this. And I cannot say I've seen many people with zero speed make a double. That's a really impressive play by the veteran. Probably his last year with us. And uh, Billy Hamilton would actually come in to pinch run for him as we just want to take advantage of this offensively and he doesn't have the speed for it. And Gavin Sheets would come in to pinch hit for Elvis Andrews. who's had a pretty decent day, but we wanted to see something here. Trying to get this offense going and it would work as Sheets. Gets a single out into the left-sided gap in left field, and Hamilton has plenty of time to run home with his 86 speed. Sadly, wouldn't be able to get anything else going. Tim Anderson would ground out to third, and we would end the inning there. But Gavin Sheets coming into pinch hit, doing a great job. He's a very good hitter against righties, and you can see that there as he hits it right into the gap and gets us a bigger lead, 3-1 to one now. Sebi Zavala would step in at catcher taking the place of our pinch hitter, Hamilton, who just didn't have a spot. He could really sit in comfortably as we would want to keep Gavin Sheets out there for his hitting. And it looks like Coloss is going to get there to the corner. Kendall Graveman not having a great start to the inning, but no one's going to run home. So two guys in scoring position, Garrett Crochet, is going to come out as Graveman just did not have a good start to that inning. Uh, Crochet has not had a great start to his season with one game under his belt and a 13.5 ERA, but hopefully he can do better. He does not, as that one gets hit out to Luis Robert Jr. He's able to get to it, but not before two runs score, making this a 3-3 ball game. Yastrzemski would then swing on a crazy high pitch. No reason to swing at that, but he did, so we would get out of the inning for free. And we would open up the eighth. Well, actually not open up. We are two outs in, and... Eloy Jimenez is getting a walk there, and then Yoan Moncada hits this one. That could be out of here, and it is caught at the morning track. That is so unfortunate. That could have put us up in the lead, but going into the ninth inning here, Liam Hendricks steps in. Not a save situation. We're hoping for a hold and to see our offense do something in the bottom of the ninth, and it's not going to start out well. A terrible call there. Clearly clipping the lines as they're going to give up a walk, but he would strike Michael Conforto out on the next batter. Roberto Perez comes up here, and he is going to lash that one into right field right along the line. Colas again having to chase one down, and let's see if he can get it in in time. It's going to be a pl close play at the plate for Moncada, and he just can't quite get it to Zavala in time. He can't place the tag. Very close relay from Colas. But it just wasn't quite enough. And then Mankata would make a mistake. That's a huge error, allowing a man to advance all the way to third and J.D. Davis to reach on first. But maybe Anderson can make this catch, and he's going to miss that as well. Him and Robert both not quite able to get there. And our defense is going to give this game up as we give him a 5-3 to three lead. Hendricks would eventually get out of that as the uh, attempt at a check swing would not work out for them. But... Uh, Andrew Vaughn doesn't get enough into that one to do anything as he's going to fly out. Camilo Duvall is in here to close. They didn't give him an intro, but uh, Hamilton wouldn't be able to do anything either. Grounding out to third, and Gavin Sheets would come up, and that one's too high in the zone. He was very late on it, so it's going to pop out to Perez. 
the man who grabbed the double that would put them into the lead, and that is just not good enough, man. We were in control for most of the game, but a two-run a two lead's nothing, as you can see there, and they were just more composed. We gave up a lot of walks, and that's not what you like to see. And then we just gave up hits at the wrong time, and then Yohan Moncada just... That horrible error to give him the extra base runner, and that put Liam Hendricks in trouble, and Liam Hendricks is actually going to take the loss, even though I feel like that was pretty bad defense. His pitching didn't help for sure. He wasn't great, but I still feel like that's harsh. Stripling comes in, gets the win. Camilo Duvall gets player of the game for that singular inning where he just made our guys look terrible. Brandon Crawford was crazy today. One for one, but he walked two or three times. Uh, Hanniger and Perez. Perez had that really clutch hit towards the very end. Uh, Oscar Colos was great for us today, two for three with a double, two doubles and an RBI, but it's just not enough as we are going to lose and we end up one and four with just the one eight to two win against Houston. Uh, we would send a few more games here and uh, we take a couple. We take one against Pittsburgh and we lose one, so we have one more game left in that series, which I may or may not play in the next episode. I will let you guys know then, but three and six, man, it's not been the start we wanted, but of course we started against last year's World Series winners, and that's tough. And the Pirates are a very good team this year, as well as the Giants are always a decent team. They've got a big budget, even if they usually fail to meet expectations. Very similarly to another team I know. Oh, it's us. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I know the commentary is a little rough at times, but just keep in mind, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm new to MLB The Show, so I'm going to work on the editing, trying to give myself a little more time, and uh, just trying to make these enjoyable to watch and make myself sound knowledgeable as I continue to learn the terms and terminology that uh, go with baseball a little bit better. But the games today overall weren't bad. Our offense showed some serious signs of promise, and our, our pitching one second looks really good, and then the next we just give up a game. But I think we can see today just how bad our defense really is and what it's like to have a team with the 30th ranks defense in the league you just can't win with that or i think we're 27th but either way a defense that bad is just not going to be able to win games consistently uh if you guys enjoyed i hope you'll join us for the next episode i'm going to try to get them out a little bit quicker but working full-time it's hard to make a lot of these and roll them out quickly but i'm sure i'll get faster as we go along um i hope you guys enjoyed the episode even if it was a couple losses this time at least we saw some good promise from some of the players and some of the team uh hopefully we'll continue to improve uh, i appreciate your suggestions i'm, I'm going to continue to look at those and see about players and trades we can make i want to try to keep this series realistic but if you're enjoying it so far just leave a like on the video go ahead and subscribe i'm going to keep them coming and i really appreciate you watching this far i will see you guys in the next one